All right, in this final podcast of Chapter 11, we're going to deal with multiple alleles, polygenic traits, and what are some of the environmental effects on genes. Uh, multiple alleles deals when, when there's more than two alleles for that a trait. So there could be three, there could be four, there could be five, or whatever. And rabbit fur is a perfect example. Now, very much like we did in codominance, you often use superscripts for this one. All right, so over here on these little bunnies, uh, we have your natural, regular brown fur. Uh, you've got a chinchilla color, which is kind of a gray. And then we have the Himalayan, and then, of course, albino, which means you do not produce any of the pigments. All right, full brown color is the dominant trait. So as you can see here, it gets a big, big C. The chinchilla color is recessive to the brown, and it gets the CH for chinchilla. But... It's dominant over these two. The Himalayan, in which you get the, the dark on the extremities, is uh, CH, superscript H, but it is recessive to both chinchilla and to the brown, but it's dominant over the albino. And then the albino is recessive to each. So as you can see here, there's four different allele combinations that will make you a brown rabbit, and you have to have at least one big C. So here you can see uh, the brown is dominant over chinchilla. It's also dominant over Himalayan, and it's also dominant over albino. In the chinchilla, there's three different combinations, and all you have to do is have at least one CH, as you can see in this case. And then we get down here to Himalayan, there's only two choices, and you have to have two CH or one of your alleles is albino, and that's what you get. And the only way that you can be albino is you have two little Cs. So that's an example of multiple alleles. Now, uh, polygenic traits occur when you have a number of different gene pairs that have to work together to create the trait. And human skin color, and in fact, a lot of human traits are actually polygenic. Now, remember the word poly means many, and genic also refers to genes. So in other words, it takes many genes to create this trait. All right. So as we can see over here, this individual is heterozygous for each of the three genes in this example. Uh, there's an A gene, a B gene, and a C gene. And the other parent has the exact same genotype. And obviously, they'd have the exact same skin color. Now, what happens in skin is the more of the dominant alleles you have, the darker the skin color is, and the more recessive alleles you have, the lighter the skin color. Now, if I did my math right, there should be 64 boxes in here. All right. Very difficult to foil these and to do the Punnett squares and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to show you a shortcut on how to do these without doing the Punnett square. All right. Uh, when we have a polygenic trait here, as you can see, more dominant, you get darker, and here you get less. All right. So let's show you some of the shortcuts. And what you can do here is just use uh, independent assortment as your advantage. All right, so let's say we've got an individual who is heterozygous for all three traits. All right, you know what? I don't like to use a C, so I'm going to use a different color or a different letter. All right, so I screwed it up again. Let's try this again. All right, they're heterozygous for every gene pair. And we'll use D's. And the reason we're using D's is it's very simple to see the difference between a big D and a little D. And we're going to cross this with an individual that's heterozygous for this trait, homozygous recessive for that trait, and then homozygous dominant for that trait. Now, you could do this, but it's not necessary. All right? So the question is, if, if one parent's like this and one parent has this genotype, what's the possibility of having a baby that comes out like this. Well, if you did the Punnett square, you'd be able to find it. But because of independent assortment, we can look at each gene pair independently of each other. And that means you only need to do monohybrid crosses. All right, what's the chance of these parents, if we look only at the A's, having a baby that's two little A's? Well, if you did your Punnett square, it'd be this guy right here because that's what the parents would be like. So we're going to say one-fourth for that one. All right. What's the chance when you have a parent who's 
big B little b and a parent who's little b little b. So which what's the opportunity of being big B little b? Well, it's going to be that one right there and that one right there. So that's half of them. So that's one out of two. All right. Uh, let's see what do we got here. The next one would be one parent is big D little d, and the other parent is big D big d. And what's the chances coming out uh, heterozygous? That would be whoops. That would be don't don't pay attention to that one. That'd be this box and that box. So that would also be one out of two. All right. So now you just multiply them together. It would be. 1 out of 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2, 16. There would be a 1 in 16 chance. Uh, so if I do my math, that would be like 4 of these boxes in here would look like that. Yeah. You might want to double check my math on that one, but that's how you do it. This is the law of independent assortment using the rules of probability. And when we get to 3 and 4 different gene pairs, we don't need to do these boxes. We can just do math. To figure it out. All right, finally, how does the environment affect gene expression? Well, sometimes what food you eat, what's the temperature out there, what's the living conditions for that organism, that can play a very, very important role in determining how that gene gets to be expressed. Right? And we see this in the western white butterfly. If it's born in the springtime when the temperature is a little bit cooler and the days are shorter, they're going to be darker. See how there's more black right in here? If the butterfly is hatched or born in the summertime when the days are longer, it's a little bit brighter, it's going to have a lighter color. See how it's brown? So as we can see here, they had a certain genotype to create these patterns. That issue was, what's the temperature, how much light's available, determines is it going to be more of a brown or is it going to be more of a black. And that's how the environment can make things happen. Let's say, for example, you're born to two really, really tall parents. So you would expect the human being, the offspring, to be tall also. But what if they're raised in a time of famine and war and there's just not food available? That baby's going to be malnourished and it's not going to be able to grow to the full extent of its height that its genotype says it should be. It can still come up pretty short because it didn't have the right kind of offspring. All right. That will conclude, conclude all of our podcasts for Chapter 11. Um, there's a number of them. Uh, tough chapter. You need to be able to do these Punnett Square problems. Review these podcasts two or three times between now and your test. And make sure you keep up with your homework.